Some months ago I made a video about how, during the Battle of Berlin, redundant panther tanks were buried up to their turrets at important crossroads and used fairly effectively as bunkers during the fight to stop the Red Army. Well, the Germans didn't just half bury panthers, but also created an entirely new type of defensive fortification using surplus panther tank turrets, the Panther Ostwaldturm, or Panther East Wall Turret, and despite the name, many actually ended up in use on the Western Front. The Panther Turm came in three basic forms, with two types actually seeing action. The idea was ridiculously simple. Since very early in World War II, the Germans had utilized redundant or outdated German tank turrets or foreign tank turrets as static bunkers or gun positions, known as Tobruks to the British after the battle where they first came across them. As we see here during a visit I made to Jersey and the Channel Islands, you can see this old French tank turret has been incorporated into a German bunker, a classic Tobruk position. The idea was simple sink a concrete bunker into the ground and mount a tank turret on top of it. In the case of the Panther Turm, only the tank turret would be visible above ground. The Germans developed two types that were actually used in combat. The Panther Turm Ein Stahluntersatz, which consisted of a prefabricated steel two-story bunker with the tank turret mounted atop and the Panterturm Drei Betonsorkel, or concrete base. Production was split roughly between the two types. Although named for the Eastern Front, only 36 ended up actually installed on Eastern Front fortifications by March 1945, while 182 were installed on the Atlantic Wall of the Siegfried Line, the Westwall defences, and 48 on the Gothic Line in Italy, plus two used for training and demonstration purposes, for a total of 268 Panther turrets. You may be wondering why these turrets and their 75mm KWK-42 guns were not placed on Panther chassis, creating tanks which would seem much more useful than static gun turrets. That's 268 less Panther tanks than Germany desperately needed in 1944-45. Well, up until 1943, only obsolete or foreign tank turrets were used for such static bunkers. But now the Germans would direct new production turrets away from the Panther tank program for use as Tobruks. The reason that the Panther was chosen was simple. The factories were producing more turrets than tank chassis, meaning a surplus was developing. And most importantly, the Panther's armour and armament made it able to withstand enormous punishment and also take out the latest Allied armour types. They were first deployed into combat on the Gothic Line in Italy in April 1944 and proved to be highly effective. The Panther Turm I was the two-storey steel structure organisation tot developed and 119 of this type would end up on the Western Front. The Panther Turm III, which required a concrete base and superstructure, had to be built in situ. Some of these were used in the defence of the Aachen region in late 1944. Unfortunately for the Germans, building such emplacements was time-consuming, and most were actually overrun before they were completed, and the Panther turrets were lost to the enemy. A backup line of 30 Panther Turm, using this time wooden superstructures, were installed in the Black Forest by March 1945, facing the advancing French First Army, though it didn't appear to be very effective. The Panther turrets mounted in this way had power supplied from the bunker below, and the gun of course retained all of its optics and was devastatingly effective, particularly in the ambush. The Panther Turm was a very low target, with just the turret and the gun exposed, and with proper camouflage was very difficult to spot, particularly for advancing Allied armoured vehicles. The Panther turret is heavily armoured, and so it could withstand a lot of punishment, and the gun was powerful and a noted tank killer. The crew lived in a bunker below the turret, and ammunition was also stored underground. 
They were used to carefully dominate certain geographical features or likely lines of enemy advance, and would of course be supported by infantry and machine gun nests, and often had to be reduced by infantry assaults after artillery and mortars had stripped away the camouflage from the bunkers and the protecting infantry. Panther Turma graphically illustrate the desperate measures imminent defeat forced onto the German army in 1944-45. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. Also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.